welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my deja vu girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's uh, July 26, 1997 again. Not like it's we Groundhog's Day. Record this right two times or anything. <laughs> How has your week been? Um, hot. My week's been hot. Yeah, because of our white hot relationship. No. Okay. <laughs> because of the weather. It's been quite warm. It's awful. It's muggy and everything. Yep. What? It is muggy and everything. And everything, yeah. Very descriptive. Everything that has to do with it being hot. Okay. Which, well, depending on where you are, could be dry or humid, but... That's true. Not everyone is sharing the same <laughs> weather that we are having. Here, it's muggy. I hope it's not muggy where you are. I hope it's and everything where you are. <laughs> All right, so I've got some news here, Carol. What what news do you it's have for us today? It's more than just the weather. Wow. Got news and weather. All right. You want to do sports? No. I know we we don't talk about sports or politics. Everyone hates when we talk about sports and politics. Well, I don't think everyone hates when we talk about sports, but I do. Okay. Well, are you into storm chasing? My friend Heather is very into storm chasing. Really. She wants to go to school to become a uh, meteorologist, and uh, she's obsessed with uh, storms. Interesting. Well, apparently the net is making it a lot easier oh, really? to be a storm chaser. Like in uh, frickin' Twister, huh? Like in frickin' Twister. <laughs> yeah, apparently they, they storm chasers track tornadoes and different locations and things like that, and you can just go on to the net and look where where a tornado is going to be. Wow. Like, like like they're making appearances in the mall, like they're fucking Tiffany. <laughs> like the net has somehow like connected with God to get the information about the weather. I guess. Well, I mean, I'm just saying it seems like it's something that just happened, not something that we're able to know about so much, but mm-hmm. apparently we are now. Yeah, we know about uh, everything. <laughs> it is all there. On the net, though, you have a choice between Windows NT and Windows 95. Which one do you think packs more punch? What's I've never even heard of Windows NT. In Windows NT. Isn't Windows not the net? When, when, it's it's a... I, well, I, I guess no. I guess it's not really a net. I it's think it's a, an operating system. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like Linux, but much more user friendly. You don't like Windows NT? I, I've never used That's it. That's the Linux based uh, Windows system. Well, that explains system. it. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't think that Linux and Windows uh, did anything together. I don't okay. know what Linux is. <laughs> It's the operating system that predates Windows. It's all text. Text? Text. You mean like MS-DOS? Sure. Disk operating system. You do like the C colon backslash backslash. Yeah. 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 Like text-based adventure games. I I love those. They're my favorite. Do you? Yeah. You know this. I'm getting this news from the Wall Street Journal. Okay. And most of everything else is, are you investing in this or are you investing in this? <laughs> and I'm not investing in anything. Well, we have to have money to invest in things. I we don't have money. You, you, you've, no, you've never heard of Windows NT, huh? No. Is that the new Windows? It's Windows not temporary. It's okay. It's the permanent Windows. Right. No, no, no. It's uh, it, it's it, like okay. So Windows ninety five came out in, I think, nineteen ninety five. One would think that, yeah. Windows NT came out a couple of years earlier. Okay, so this is the older version. Yes. 
Okay, so why are we talking about this? Which one packs more punch? I'm going to go with 95. Since Windows it's NT newer. 3.1. Windows 3.1. Okay. Well, I mean, some people don't like the. I think NT st- stood for new technology. Mm. Um, some people don't like the new Windows 95, like the. Because it changes some things in how you interface. Yeah, nobody likes change. That's true. I'm just saying, but you don't have much experience with Windows 3.1, huh? No. Okay. No, my first Windows experience that I can recall is uh, 95. Because I mean, you were a Linux girl. N- no, but I, I don't know. Like, I didn't get my first computer till 95, and we had Windows 95 on it. But I know some, you know, computer dorks who used Linux. I got a computer last year, I think, or the year before, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I guess I got mine in 95, too. I I played Oregon Trail. Did you? For hours. It took up all the memory on the computer. I played this game that I can't remember what it's called. But it was like it's like an adventure game where you have to solve puzzles and stuff like that. Oh, fun! Yeah, it was cool. Like uh, one of the the uh, one of the clues had something to do with the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, or whatever. Oh, I love that book. I think something about like where Aslan, where you'd find Aslan, or something like that. And you had to go in the wardrobe. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, to like find your next. Thing or whatever. I don't. I don't remember what it was called. It was fun though. Came on like four floppy disks. <laughs> but anyway, uh, speaking of floppy disks, we watched a movie this week that had nothing to do with floppy disks. There were computers on the plane. Okay, which I assume <laughs> had floppy disks. Maybe. Not that that's like a reach at all. We watched. Air Force One. Yep. This movie was so good that I can't wait to see Air Force Two. (laughs) I don't know. I can't decide if I like it or not. Really? I mean, it was interesting. It was exciting most of the time, although it dragged a little bit here and there. Had a Um, lot of pacing problems. But uh, I don't know. It was also kind of weird and stupid and... Um, I don't know. So, the, the originally, the what it made me think of at first was speed. Okay. But then, obviously, it hit me what it is. Hmm. It's die hard on a plane. Okay. Just like speed is die hard on a bus, this is die hard on a plane. One dude against a bunch of terrorists. He's got a gun. He's trying to take it over. White-haired Harrison Ford. <laughs> His hair was not white. That's getting there. But he's definitely older than he was, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's not Han Solo <laughs> no. taking over this plane. No. It was funny, though, because like it made me think of, at one point, so they hijack the plane. These terrorists hijack the plane because they want... It's a very simplistic plot. Terrorists hijack a plane... Well, hijack Air Force, Air Force One. One. Because they want to pressure the president into having Russia release this Kazakhstani general, the fearsome nation of Kazakhstan, because they are upset that the Soviet Union is broken up. I have a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Is Kazakhstan a real place? Yes. It's the largest <laughs> landlocked country in the world. Okay. Two, why would Russia listen to our president asking for them to release this prisoner? Because, as Gary Oldman says, he is your puppet. You, you've, what? He is your puppet. You've, you've put him in power. He will listen to you, Das Pitania. Ah. I think that's stupid. I don't think it would really work. You are the reason that Russia is in the state it is in. I mean, I can't imagine that, like, if the situation were reversed, right? Yeah. And some other, like, political leader of some other country is being held by terrorists that they would call us and be like, hey, release this prisoner. And we'd be like, oh, sure. Or we'll kill the Russian president. Yeah, like, who cares? We'll I kill, mean, not, like, not we'll in the mean way, Boris but... Yeltsin? Yeah. With alcohol poisoning? <laughs> 
It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I I don't know. The geopolitical aspect of it, I'm not 100% sure on, to be completely honest with you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if, like, if we had a terrorist in our custody and Boris Yeltsin was being held hostage, him and his family, and fed vodka to keep him compliant. <laughs> and they called Bill Clinton and they said, your, your friend Boris is, and Natasha, his wife. <laughs> are being held and I will kill them and they're there's a girl unless you release this terrorist. You think Bill Clinton would be like, oh, we don't negotiate with her. Yes, I do. I think that would be the response. Sorry, Boris, you're going to have to die. <laughs> I mean, like, how many prisoners of war have we, like, left places for years because we don't negotiate with terrorists? Yeah, I don't know. So I, I don't know the answer to that question. Well, I'm sure it's a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just... but the policy, as Dean Stockwell points out, as Al from Quantum Leap, did you, you didn't think I was going to mention that? Oh, I knew you were going to mention you it. You didn't think I was going to mention that Al from Quantum Leap is in this movie? I don't think you could contain yourself from mentioning <laughs> it. You don't think I could contain my uh, uh, <laughs> my arousal when oh I saw goodness. him on the screen? It's <laughs> like, that's Al! Just like any time... Scott Bakula pops up in something. Right. I'm, I'm always excited about it. Not as excited when I, you know, come home from work or whatever, but sure. No. <laughs> I see you more often than I see Dean Stockwell now. Uh, <laughs> I got you. But anyway, so, yeah, that's the plot of the movie. And then he's got to, they all think he's gone, that he jettisoned on an escape pod like he was a droid in Star Wars or something. It's very weird. And, but he didn't. He stayed on board the plane because his family's on the plane, his wife and his little girl. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would believe that he would have left. Well, like, they tri- they forced him down there. Yeah. It's like procedure or whatever. I guess. He's supposed to be in charge. They shouldn't be able to force him to do things. Just oh, saying. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what the Secret Service does. That's their job. They can order the president around in, in situations like that because that's their job. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so he diehards it. He's sneaking around. On the, he's writing on terrorists. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> now I have a machine gun. Because giving up the elements of surprise is the best thing in the world. No, he doesn't do that. Yeah. He's not dumb. I was going to say. But I think it was funny when they find out. So this, they, there are two scenes or two sets in this movie. Set one, Air Force One. Right. Set two, Air Force Two. No, uh, uh-huh. set, set two is the situation room where Glenn Close and Dean Stockwell are arguing over who's in charge. Which is ridiculous. Like, just fucking figure shit out, people. And work together. He wants her to say that the president's not the president anymore or whatever. Um, but I think it's so funny. There's a this general or whatever in the room. And he's like, well, the, the president was flew many successful combat missions in <laughs> Vietnam under me. And he's he's a killer and he's he's Rambo and, and he, we're lucky to have him on board. He's our best chance. And it's just like, I feel like this movie is for like every dad <laughs> that was like 25 years ago. I was a great man <laughs> to think that this dude was in Vietnam 25 years ago. Harrison Ford. Right. And I guess Star Wars was his Vietnam. Right. And uh, that, like, he's like, I'm I'm just as good now. I haven't lost it. I can still take on a group of terrorists single-handedly and win. That's a that's wish fulfillment for right. every guy who thinks he's past his prime now. So you think this movie is for middle-aged men, basically. <laughs> of course. <laughs> who else would it be for? I don't know. I mean, like, I kind of enjoyed it. It's not for hip it. youth like us. <laughs> but, I mean, like, he was put in some pretty awful situations. Sure. Because his wife and daughter were on this plane. If his wife and daughter hadn't been on the plane, it would have been all a whole his different movie. Yeah. But it would have been a very different movie, I think, without his wife and daughter. Yeah. That's true. They were having a surprise party for him. <laughs> all his friends were surprise! on the plane. Surprise! <laughs> No, he, 
Like, I mean, like his staff and everything. Yeah. Like, he was friendly with them. William H. Macy was on the plane. That one staff guy that, that took a bullet for him. You remember William H. Macy from Fargo? Yeah. Mr. Sure. Lundegaard? <laughs> Played an idiot in that one movie, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, what did you think about the terrorist's plan? Um, I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was kind of stupid, but I mean, it worked. It kind of worked out for him. <laughs> Momentarily, you, it worked out for him. Do you feel like it's an, it, w- it would be that easy to gain access to Air Force One? No. They, supposedly they killed the, the camera crew and reporters and stuff that they were, like, replacing. Mm-hmm. But, like, they should have known what they would look like. They, yeah, you would think that the, that the Secret Service would do that due diligence. Yeah. But, I don't know, maybe the guy in charge of it was the one that was on their side. Maybe. Which they never explained. They had a Secret no. Service agent on their side, but it was never explained, like, is he a Russian secret? Like, is he a sec- secret deep cover agent? Right. I don't think so. I think they just paid him money. Yeah, well, we don't know. We have no idea. We don't know, like, when they... Like, all we needed was one scene with Gary Oldman and him to be like, where's my money? Right. You you, you came to my apartment. You said you, you'd transfer the rest of it or whatever. I've got bills to pay. I owe money to Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> the president knows what I'm talking about. Do you know there's a comic book uh, about Star Wars, and it takes place, I think, between... The, the second and the third movie. Okay. So between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. And uh, fucking, what's his name? Han Solo goes back to to Tatooine or whatever to pay like Jabba the Hutt. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get some money or whatever. Or no. Oh, no. I think it takes place after uh, after Jabba's dead. Okay. But he had some money on Tatooine that he was going to play to pay Jabba. And like so I'm reading this comic book and I assumed that it would just be like it would be like, you know, in a cave or buried or so but it's just at a bank. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm not sure either. <laughs> oh, the Secret Service agent owed Jabba the Hutt money. Okay. That was a scene that they needed to write in there. Right. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice to know his motivation, to know whether or not he was, like, loyal to Russia or just whatever. Right. But um, he seemed pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He took the First Lady and their daughter away from the big group. I'm not quite sure why, because it's not like he started threatening to kill them right away. Did he just want to traumatize the child more? Because I don't it know. Seemed like that was You're his about goal. Gary yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, like, yeah, it's weird because he did that before he even knew the president was on the plane. Yeah, like, so what was I'm, he gonna do? I don't know. And he's asking her all these questions, like, and Gary Oldman does. Gary Oldman's great in this movie, mm-hmm. as he is usually. If you need a villain for a movie, <laughs> get Gary Oldman. But. Like his accent was too good sometimes. Yeah, it was Where a little I'd hard be to hear like, him. Uh, You don't think I'm a, I'm a husband and I'm a husband. I, I'm a son. Too. I have three sons of my own. Right. And then he's like, just like going and and my sons, I think they're Russian. And he's like, he's just going on. And I'm like, what is he saying? <laughs> he's talking about Russia, I think, and he wants Russia to be united. But like, and she's like, my dad's a great man. You're nothing like him. You're fucking garbage. Well, at first she was ignoring him, and he says to her mother, make her answer me. Like, what? why do you care so much? Like, it seemed like he was really emotionally invested in whether or not she thinks he's a monster. And it's like, does it really matter? Because you are, whether you think it or not. I did all this to impress you. Right? And then he like You're my Jody Foster. touches her face in this like affectionate kind of way and kissed her forehead and it's yeah. like what are you doing? And it wasn't like a creepy like sexual kind of thing like it was it's like that, a dad thing. Yeah. But it's like what was going on in his crazy brain when oh. he was doing that? After because, I kill your father I'll yeah. be your dad. Cuz like later he was going to like fucking put a bullet in her head so like he obviously wasn't that emotionally invested. 
I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> yeah. He's a weirdo. <laughs> Gary Oldman always plays a fucking weirdo, whether it's in the fifth elements or where he's, you know, he's talking to the concept of fear, a fear cloud or whatever right. on the telephone or whatever. But yeah, he's he's so weird, but he's good. He's a good actor. He's good in this. Harrison Ford's good in this. Yeah, I mean, everybody was, you know, pretty good. I don't think there's any poor acting. No, but I would say Gary Oldman was like, and Harrison Ford are probably the standouts. Oh, for sure. Except for when Harrison Ford says, get off my plane. It was ridiculous. There was a lot of ridiculousness in this movie. One of my favorite unintentionally hilarious moments is when... They so the plane's going down after they've taken control of the plane. You have you seen the movie? After they've taken control of the plane again, you know as predicted, the plane's very badly damaged. So so they come up with this plan of connecting a like zip line between the planes so they can grab people and zip line them off the plane, which I is, apparently is a very is an actual procedure. That sounds. So awful and terrifying. It looked so awful and oh, terrifying. Yeah. But so the the plane keeps, the Air Force One keeps losing altitude. So at one point, they're taking this wounded guy. He's like grievously <laughs> wounded. He jumped in front of a bullet uh, for the president. And the plane's going down. And because of that, the line is going back towards Air Force One. And they're, they're so they slowly start going away from the, the good plane that they're trying to get to and back towards Air Force One, and he just kind of reaches out his hand like, oh, no. It's, it was. It's hilarious. I mean, I actually laughed out loud in the theater, and it was not really a funny time, and I'm no. sure people thought that we were assholes, but it I was mean, hilarious. It was. It's probably realistic as to what someone would do, right? but it just seemed like such a casual motion. <laughs> Let me for the situation. The oh, but yeah, it was very funny. And uh, I'm trying to think of some other uh, funny moments. At I mean, one point, Gary Oldman spits on Harrison Ford. You thought that like, was funny, and I'm like, uh, "Whoa, were you Robbie Alomar there? Uh, come on, man!" I mean, the movie's not like a laugh riot or anything. No, no, there's no, there's no actual humor in the movie. No. There's nothing that's supposed to be funny in the movie. There's just a few things that are funny in the movie. But the main... So, I don't know why they decided to do this, but the, you know, there's the fight in the air and all that stuff. And then the main the main fight or whatever, the drama on the ground, mm-hmm. is whether or not the president is competent or not because they're having it. Like I said, Dean Stockwell and Glenn Close are having a disagreement. The actors are having a disagreement about what would happen if a president was in this situation. Right. And they were like, we need a constitutional, uh, whatever constitutional ruling. And this guy that apparently is a expert on the constitution or whatever comes in Mm -hmm. and says, Hey, uh, so if the, president is in a military zone or whatever the secretary of defense is second in command i guess for um military matters okay so dean stockwell would be in charge he's like but he's under duress because his him and his and his family are being held hostage therefore you know he can't execute the office of the presidency so the vice president should be you know, temporary president. I gotta say, I agree. Like, I agree with everything he was saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I in that situation, I would think that he would be incapacitated as for his duties as president. And of course, while they're having this debate, is when the terrorist grabs his daughter and says, "If he doesn't order for Russia to release." This general, general, general that, Radic. Yeah, that he's going to shoot her. That Russian name, General Radic. He actually got. He said he's going to count to five, and he actually got to two. I mean, that's some balls of steel. Oh, yeah. I don't think most dads would have let him get to two. Right. He's looking her in the eye, saying, "It's going to be okay, sweetie." Mm-hmm. Like I honestly thought for a second maybe he was actually going to let him shoot her. Wow, that would have been something. <laughs> 
But he, you know, he did, you know, give in to the terrorist. And so right as he's giving in to the terrorist. I like the way he did it, too. I like the way he gave in to the terrorists. Hmm. Not to derail you. But Harrison Ford's just like, okay. You know, like, like, it's not a big, like, he doesn't, you can play it a lot of different ways. He doesn't hmm. play it where he's, like, he's shouting or whatever. He plays it like he's broken. Yeah. He and, is broken. And he just, I know. And I think it's the right way to play it. And he just, like, it's very simple, but, like, the way he says it is, like, wounded. It's just, it's very, it's a very good way to play it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because he's just like, I'll do it. Right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, then in that moment, he he really shouldn't be able to make the decisions. Correct. So everything they're doing is right, but being emotional and watching what was happening and then having them talking about whether or not to take his power away from him. Like, I'm glad she didn't sign the paper because I, th- I think that it would have been awful. I think she, wh- I think she was derelict in her job by not signing the paper, to be honest. Yeah. With you. I mean, like the way things should be, you're right. But I mean, emotionally, I think she was right. still. cause the thing is, it's only temporary as long as he lives. Yeah. But, Okay, she signs the paper. He can't make the decisions. He still calls Russia. Russia doesn't know. Yeah, Russia's still going to do it. Apparently, yeah. I guess. Unless because they guess also it call the Russia. Way. If it goes the other way, it's like uh, Boris. Hmm? Boris have got Hillary and Chelsea. I need you to release uh, this. this uh, yeah. Of course. Of course. My drinking buddy. Of course I will release. <laughs> They're good friends. They drink together or whatever. I don't know. Weird. That's the story. Mm. Allegedly. Don't come to my house, Secret Service. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm glad that it worked out the way that it did, but I, I I don't know. I just don't think that I would have done anything different. Yeah, I don't know. William H. Mace gets killed. That sucks. Yeah. Um... I don't really have much else to say about the movie. It's a very standard action movie with a very standard action plot, and you know everywhere this movie's going. From point A to point B to point Z, <laughs> you know every place this movie's going, and it's fine. You know, it's the, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. It's enjoyable. It's held together by Gary Oldman and, and Harrison Ford. Honestly, by those performances. And Glenn Close is good in the limited capacity that she gets to be. And, of course, Dean Stockwell is also oh, right. always good. That's a given, everyone. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's not, there's no surprises here. It's not innovative filmmaking. It's kind of, to me, antiquated because it's a very much, it's like the old Cold War kind of style movies. Okay. It's Russia, but it's not Russia. It's offshoots of Russia. It's the old Soviet Union guys mm-hmm. and the United States fighting against each other. Even Migs come into the the point of what into the movie at one point, and I expected Tom Cruise to fly down and be like, I, "It's me. It's Maverick. <laughs> it's Top Gun again, everyone." Right. I've got the Migs. <laughs> come on, Goose. You're alive again. It's yeah. wish fulfillment, the movie. <laughs> um, but no, I, like it's it, like I said, it, to me it's very because we're beyond that now. And I know it's it's hard for screenwriters. There's no default bad guys in international settings anymore because it used <laughs> to always be. It was very easy. You want a default bad guy? He's Russian. Yeah, that's bad true. guy in every movie. That's true. And now they don't know what the fuck to do. I don't know, be original, use your brain, come up with an evil character that, you know, doesn't need to be a stereotype. There was, a that, there was that bombing in, at the World Trade Center, remember that? Like, uh, I think, um, uh, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Osama Bin Laden, he uh, he was behind that. They You don't remember that? They took a, uh, a U-Haul truck and they drove it into... The underground parking garage, the World Trade Center, was filled with explosives. Mm -hmm. And they exploded it. Hmm. And they caught him. (laughs) Because this fucking idiot went back to you all to try to get his deposit back. (laughs) Seriously? Wow. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, so, like, it damaged some of the underground structure, uh, but everything was fine. But, like, um, so they're they're out there, you know, the, like, dudes like that. Mm-hmm. You could make them bad guys. Right. There you go. Yep, next bad guy can be a terrorist with a U-Haul. Yeah, Osama or whatever his name <laughs> is. Um, but, yeah, that's it. That's it for this movie. I do, I, would you recommend it? Yeah, just don't have high expectations. Like it's a it's a pleasant way to spend an evening. I think it's a blockbuster movie. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you. It, it's a bit. It's a like because because you might think because it's a movie about you know terrorism on uh, Air Force One and you see the big explosions. The, at one point, a fuel plane explodes in this big explosion, and then uh, when. Air Force One crashes uh, eventually. Uh, it, an MS paint version of <laughs> Air Force One flips around in water. But you, so you might think, oh, I got to see it on the big screen because it's all this big spectacle. It's not. No. It's, it's not enhanced by being on the big screen. No, it's no Jurassic Park. No. You can definitely rent it. I would wait for it to come to Blockbuster in a year. You're not missing anything until then. Right. But anyway, that is the episode for the week, Carol. Why don't you tell the people stuff? So you can write us at latefee1994 at AOL.com. Mm-hmm. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Yes. And tell your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.